Hey everyone, this is Jesse from The Movement Athlete. In today's video, we'll be going over common mistakes that people make when training the ring dips. We're gonna talk about how to identify them, what not to do, and of course, how to fix them. So normally I see seven different mistakes when people are training ring dips. Being able to identify and improve them is going to improve your performance on the dip and of course lead into more difficult, impressive skills on the rings. Many reasons of why you might not be able to do a rings dip is because you probably have to go backwards in the regression and go back to a stable surface and perform a, a technically good dip on a stable surface such as the two chairs or the parallel bars. So getting that movement pathway solidified is a great idea. Um, you also need to be able to be strong and stable at the top of the ring dip, of course, and the bottom of the ring dip, right? The start and the ending phase of it and tempo work, moving slowly through it and having that control. So reasons of why you might not be able to do your ring dips can come down to a few things. Number one is maybe there's a lack of understanding of what you're doing in the ring dip, unaware of your movement pathway. Uh, if you're training fatigued and doing a lot of reps and you're not doing high quality movement, you're gonna be training incorrectly. And then more specifically, there'd be things such as um, not starting the support position in the, in the right position, right? You might have bent arms, poor posture, uh, be resting on the straps would be another one, not dipping low enough, moving too fast in the dip, contacting the lats and triceps, which will make it easier and reduce from your uh, strength gains, then not finishing the lockout at the top. And this, of course, is similar to the initial one, but it's so important that I wanted to mention it twice. It's where the dip starts. It's also where it ends. Some people start correctly at the top and then don't finish the rep on the other end of it. Okay, so Jeremy, why don't you hop up and show us a bent arm support position. This is one of the first faults. So you can see his arms are just stuck in this bent position, right? This is often where people start and finish their dips. So anyway, the way to fix this, of course, is to simply lock out. We'll show you this in a moment. People might be stuck in this bent arm position because number one, they could be a lack of understanding. They might not know that they're bent. It could be because they haven't practiced this enough. It could be because there's elbow pain, right? It might be hyperextending the elbows and it's uncomfortable and it feels better to bend it. So again, let's, let's hop back up and we'll go from this bent arm position and then fixing it of what would happen, right? So Jeremy's gonna just push down harder on the rings and straighten his arms as much as possible. You can see he's straighter, he's taller now and he's got that, that controlled support. So that's what it should look like going from bent to straight. That's just the simple fix, right? It could be a cue, could, you, could just be understanding. If you're still having trouble with this, my suggestion would be to go back to stable ground, like the, the uh, two chairs or parallel bars, something that's stable, and practicing this lockout with less of a load. So the next fault that we'll be looking at is still a postural issue, and this will be when the head is jutted forwards and your shoulders are, are shrugged up to the top. So let's take a look at what this looks like, Jeremy. So he's gonna hop up and he's in the support position. Shoulders are shrugged, head is forward. So let's take a look at what it looks like to fix it, of course, right? Pushing tall again, neutralizing the head position, being tall. A reason this might be happening is because the muscles for retraction and depression are a little weaker or maybe there's, a, again, a lack of understanding. So. Uh, maybe you need to strengthen the rhomboids, the rear deltoids, the triceps, the pecs to indeed push down and retract the shoulders to be nice and tall. The next fault that we'll be looking at with the ring dips are touching the straps. And this can happen in the support phase and throughout the whole dip. So this is probably the biggest fault. Let's take a look at what this is. So Jeremy is starting support. You can see the straps are completely resting on his forearms and his triceps a little bit. And this can even happen during the dip. Very common that the whole dip itself, he's just resting on the straps. And this is, this is a big error, right? Great, you can hop on down. This is a big error. You're gonna be uh, reducing your strength gains, right? So to fix this, again, maybe there's a lack of understanding. Maybe it's, I didn't know I had to turn the rings out. Um, and it's natural to really just turn the rings in. So you have to strengthen the external rotation of the, the shoulders and, and those muscles to supinate um, in, into this position. So a great idea would be to practice this on the parallel bars with the correct turnout. And, and uh, basically the pit of the elbows should be forwards. That way you're not resting on the straps when you rotate inwards, right? You have to 
retract and keep it away from the straps. All right, so we're gonna take a closer look at what the straps resting on the arms looks like. So you can see in the support position, there it is, it's on his arms from the triceps to the forearms. This might also happen during the dip. So as he's dipping, there's still a lot of contact with straps there. So the next common fault that we'll be looking at is when you don't dip low enough. So the form might be good, but it just might not be in a full range. So Jeremy's gonna show us what that looks like. So start to support and you can see it's just a, it's like a mini dip. He's going about halfway down, right? Great. Okay, so this might happen because there could be a lack of the range of motion that we spoke about before. Maybe you're just not able to get into this position in the first place. And it could just be, it's not strong enough, but you need to spend a lot of time being comfortable at the bottom of a dip. Again, relating this to squats, if you are not comfortable at the bottom of your squat, your squat's not going to go so well. So dips, same thing. You need to be comfortable at the bottom of a dip, strong and stable, and then being able to press back up to the top again. The next fault that we'll be looking at are when the dips are too fast, right? So just rushing through it and you're probably skipping the whole range and you're not finishing the lockout, but nonetheless, let's look at what the quick rush dips tend to look like. So just rushing. Good. You can see he's not finishing the lockout. He's just going through them very fast and he's not finishing the whole lockout. It's too fast. And again, if this is happening in the learning phase, you're really, really taking, you're missing a lot of bang for your buck here. Um, but everybody, almost everybody likes to rush their reps, right? We want to get the workout done fast enough, or we like to use momentum, right? If you're going fast enough, there's more momentum, and oftentimes it's easier, right? Because uh, less, less strength is involved if there's more momentum. So it would be ideal to train tempo work, meaning going slower, getting the control to go through the whole range of motion, rather than rushing through it, because again, momentum can hide the fact that there might be a weakness. And if you take a step back and go through tempo work with these kind of things, you'll, you'll notice how much harder it is. But um, this moving too fast through a dip is um, kind of a, a gateway to more errors immediately. So that's another common error that we see. Another fault that we see in the ring dips are when you contact the triceps and lats and kind of just sandwich it together to make more contact and, and uh, help with stability in the whole dip itself. But again, you're taking away from your gain. So Jeremy's gonna show us what that tends to look like. He starts off really close together and he's sandwiching his arms close to his triceps and his, his lats and there's just too much contact, right? They're not free enough. So um, the way to correct this, of course, is you need to be more comfortable away from the rings, right? If you're too close and you're sandwiched, you're, you're losing a lot of the gain. So I have to be a little bit further away and uh, practicing that dip with uh, less, less contact as possible. Jeremy, of course, has uh, got that classic triangle uh, build as, as rings gymnasts, uh, ring specialists tend to have. Uh, everybody's body's a little bit different, but trying to not contact so much on the, those couple of muscles. Ways to fix this would be to wider width parallel bar dips. So again, going back to stable ground and training wider dips to, be, to get rid of that contact. So for this one, we're definitely going to want to take a closer look because some of you are thinking, well, that looked like a good dip anyway. So we're going to take a closer look to see how this actually works. So we'll do a couple of these sandwiched close together ones. So take uh, close attention to his triceps and lats, right? You'll really see it on the descend, not so much at the bottom, but on the, the descending and the, uh, the top portion of the dip. And then Jeremy, why don't you show us some ones that are, have more distance, right? So he's moving the rings further away from him and you can see there's less to no contact in, in these dips, right? So it might feel like a wider dip. It really is a wider dip, right? Not so wide that it's uh, like a cross, of course, but not sandwiching your arms to your torso. So the last major fault that we see are not completing the lockout during the dips. So the dip might start off in the correct position, but of course, after each rep, maybe it doesn't return back to its original starting point. So let's take a close look at some of the ones that are incorrect and then we'll look at the correct. So Jeremy starts off locked, he's gonna do a couple dips and you'll notice he doesn't return back to the top, right? He's just, just short of it. So there's two incorrect and then here we're gonna go with the complete lockout, right? You can clearly see the elbows are good there and he's got that right. So again, this is overlapping one of the initial faults, but I, I think this was important to do because 
it's, it's a little bit separate, right? You might be starting off in the correct position, but later on, maybe you're fatigued, maybe there's a lack of awareness. Uh, it would be great to use a mirror, then you can see if you're doing the right positions or a video, but just practicing this. And um, again, as we get fatigued, it's really common to just start um, or not finish the lockout, right? We're just going for the next rep. How many can we do? How many can we fit in? And there's uh, not enough of attention to detail. And we always want to be training to the highest standard. So those are the common faults that we tend to see in ring dips. And of course, there can be a whole combination of all of these in one, right? So a lot of them tend to be postural based, lack of stability based, but can just turn into a variety, right? It could be rings are turned in, they're the bent at the top, um, a lot of these ones that we've gone over can lead into further, right? Dipping and uh, bending the torso. We're talking about straight posture and oftentimes the, the shoulders start to go lower instead of keeping upright. So there can be a whole combination of all these uh, errors. These are the most common and it can kind of just go on from there. But again, we want to be rested and controlled and training to the highest standard so we're not practicing the incorrect dips. Real quick, if you guys liked what you saw here, please click the link in the description below. It'll take you to a free course. It's got a lot of guides, challenges, and resources for how to learn more calisthenic and bodyweight training skills. It's gonna help you get stronger, fitter, more mobile, happier, and it'll help you achieve your fitness goals. So, see you inside.